Welcome to Google Arts and Culture. I am the icon, Jason Supreme Montclair. Today, we're gonna to take you on a journey of Butch Queen Face. To those that are just watching, Butch Queen Face is a category that consists of five elements, skin, teeth, structure, attitude, smile, clean nails, and overall presentation, and a little bit of classic shape. Today, we're having a conversation with some of the pioneers and icons and legends in the Butch Queen Face category, we wanted to sit down and kind of bring all the eras together so we can have an authentic, organic conversation about Butch Queen Face and their lived experience. Today, I'm joined by my brothers, sisters, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, you name it. And we're gonna have a conversation talking about Butch Queen Face in its entirety. So I hope you guys are ready. Hello, my name is Alan Adonis. I am the founder of the House of Adonis that was established in 1987 and I represent the Red Era. I discovered ballroom back in 1986. That was my first time ever entering a ballroom. However, the following year in 1987 is when I made my debut as the mother of the House of Adonis, as well as the founder of the House of Adonis in 1987. When face was introduced to me back in 1987, it was about natural face. It was about waking up in the morning, taking a shower, fresh, coming out the shower fresh, you know, skin, your skin was very important back then, as well as your structure. It was all about the eyes, it was about your nose, it was about your, your teeth, your smile, and of course your jawbone. Those were the elements back then that was important to elevate yourself in ballroom history from that time. Being someone of darker complexion, dark skin, how was your journey being a dark skinned man in the face category back then, being as there was a lot of light and lovely boys back then, how to, what was that like for you? Back then it was very hard for dark skinned people of my complexion. However, my goal, and my intent was to bring dark and lovely face to the forefront. It was my desire to let everybody, all of the butch queens in, in ballroom, know that you can be dark and lovely at the same time. Just because my complexion is a little darker does not mean that I don't have face. So my goal was to come forth and show the world at that time what a dark-skinned person can look like my features were unique. A lot of people told me that I looked European because of my nose and my jawbone, as well as my oval eyes. I took that as a compliment. In addition to my elongated neck was something that I used to my advantage. Um, back then, face was, you know, just walking up, going to the judge's table, smiling, you know, you go to the left, you go to the right. However, when I entered ballroom in 1987, I wanted to bring something new to the table. So instead of just walking up to the table, I leaned over the table backwards. That was known as the Alan Adonis back face dip in 1987. From that time, I became like a phenomenon in New York City where my name was ringing bells uh, uptown, downtown, in the Bronx. And of course, it hit the two people that was most famous at that time, which was Erskine Christian and Michael Princess. They heard of me, but they've never seen me. Me being a dark-skinned butch queen from Brooklyn, at that time, the only dark-skinned person that was from Brooklyn was Michael Dupree who was also dark skinned like me. However, he took me under his wing because he could not do, he was, he was unable, put it that way, to fulfill his destiny because of the fact that he was constantly being tag team by Erskine and Michael Princess. So he gave me the tools that I needed and he told me if there's anybody that can conquer, it would be me. So as I entered ballroom, my very first ball, 
I was the first butch queen to ever win four grand prize trophies, my very first ball. And what were those four grand prize trophies? My very first category was Marbell's Body, which I won grand prize. My second category that night was New Face, which I won grand prize. My third category that night was Dark and Lovely Face, which I won grand prize. And then the final category for the evening was Face Face and More Face, which was a combination of the white era and the red era at that time. All of the faces that were walking at that time were able to walk Face Face and More Face. New Face was only for first time walkers only. So that was my, that was the beginning of my ballroom history. At the time, I didn't know that I was making history. However, over the years, it became relevant. Today, it's very relevant. And I would like for everyone to know my history because it wasn't easy. You know, I battled with some of the gorgeous light-skinned beauties at that time. Um, there were very few dark-skinned beauties at that time. Do you remember any other besides yourself and Michael Dupree that was walking in that Yes, I do. Um, at that time, it was Ira Ebony, who was gorgeous to me. Um, it was also Brian Omni, who was gorgeous to me. Uh, if I had, it was Michael Ebony also, who was gorgeous to me as well. At that time, it was very few darker complexed butch queens, only because they would either get chopped or they wouldn't win, you know, so they were discouraged and it was a constant battle, you know, okay, should I walk, should I not walk? Because they already knew what the stereotype was at that time that the darker your skin the less likely you were to win. Mm. Oh, wow. Well, today, from what I've seen, you know, I've only physically been to maybe one or two recently. But for what I see today, the difference, the contrast between then and now is it's more glamorized now. You know, um, it's all about the whole effect. You know, um, your outfit plays an important role. Uh, your energy that you bring. The difference between then and now, what I've noticed with the houses, the bigger the house, the bigger the raw. However, back then, it didn't matter what house you was at. If you was making noise, they were roaring for you. And I see that as being the biggest difference between then and now pertaining to, especially Butch Queen Face. It's always a point that I make when it comes to face. It's not about how good looking you are. It's about how you sell that face that you were blessed to have. And being different. Judges get bored with looking at the same moves. Judges get bored with seeing the same type of face. So whenever someone different come around or having a more exotic look, that's where the judge's attention is gonna be zoomed in on. You know, and once that happens, it's up to that individual to then say, okay, now that the attention is on me, what am I gonna do now? Right. You understand? <laughs> you have to be able to reflect to the audience because they pay their money to come see somebody. They want to see a show, you know, and it's not just a show. They want to see the best show, you know, especially when it's a, a well-known person name, you know, I've heard about this one. I heard about that one, you know, so now I'm here and I want to see it in person. I want to see exactly what they've done to do, you know, so back then for me, it was about bringing something different to the table. You know, and I created a lot of things uh, during my era, the red era, that still holds today. You know, I see the younger butch queens doing moves that I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I see the younger butch queens selling it the way I did. 
you know, and that's important because the legacy has traveled to the next generation and so on, you know, which is what this culture is all about. You know, it's all about sharing knowledge. It's all about elevating those who are coming behind you to make sure that they are able to continue this legacy that we call ballroom, which we love so much, you know, and that's the one thing that I appreciate about the newer generation. They have definitely taken ballroom to another level, which is great on their part. I appreciate them very much. My biggest rival on the floor was Ira Ebony. The style, the charisma, the attitude, he had it. And um, during that time, it was so mind boggling to me because every time him and I were friends, that's the first thing, let me get that across immediately. You know, because a lot of people think that just because we walk the same category, we, we don't like each other. That's not true. Um, Ira and I were very, fr very close friends. And I felt when I came on the scene, because he had been there for a minute, and uh, as he walked, the crowd would go crazy for Ira. And um, then all of a sudden, he is this new dark skin shell, Alan Adonis. And when I would step out, the crowd would just go absolutely bananas because him and I, our features were similar. Our skin was similar, you know, and our hairstyle at that time was similar. But the difference is, is that I was tall. He was a little shorter than I. So I used my height to my advantage. I used my model less body to my advantage. I used my neck to my advantage. You know, those are the things that separated a nice looking guy from another nice looking guy. It was the performance aspect of it, you know? And back then, every move that you made made a big difference. And it was those, it's the timing. I was able to capture the timing at the right time, which would leave my opponent gagging somewhat. What was what, one battle that you can think of at the top of your head that you could say you left your opponent gagging? And who was it? Well, the first year, during the first year, my opponent that I battled with that was like the highlight of ballroom at that time was Michael Princess. Uh, during that time, prior to me actually seeing him, I had already won all four major balls in New York City for the first year of 1987. That was Pepe La Beige's ball, which I won four grand prize trophies. Then it was Avis Pendavis ball, which I won two grand prize trophies for face. Then it was Angie Extravaganza's ball, which I won two grand prize trophies for face. And then the last of the year was Paris ball, which I couldn't walk new face. So I won face and I won face, face, and more face at Paris ball. So wait, stop for just one second. So thinking back to that time, you said there was only four balls in New York City, period. Well, those were the four were the major, major balls. balls. Yes. So you could walk those four major balls and win them four major balls and not have to walk nothing else. Well, it wasn't so much that you didn't have to walk anything else. It was your choice like it is today. Mm -hmm. You know, you walk whatever board you choose to walk. However, if you're just coming out in the scene, you want to walk every ball. Every ball, right. Okay, because you want your name to be known. You want everybody that's walking your category to know that you've arrived. So how was it that you weren't able to see um, Michael Princess, or y'all didn't see each other if y'all were at the scene, but he not at those balls with you, or was there other balls going on in Harlem that was different from Brooklyn? Like, how, how did that work? Well, during, during 1987, he wasn't present. Okay. Okay, um, my first two balls, he did not attend at all. Then at Angie Extravaganza's ball, he did attend. Michael Princess and Erskine Christian, they both came. However, 
the commentator, which at the time was, um, I think it was Junior Labasia. He tried to spark it, of course, <laughs> you know, to heat it up. And um, he called, he called me. Well, they, they waited for last to call me. And when I came out, Junior said to Michael at Erskine, who was at the front table, you know, well, he's here, you know, something to that effect. Um, I can't remember ber verbatim exactly what the words were, but in other words, the person that you heard about is here. Mm -hmm. Do you want it? So the shade was very thick. Did they want it? Needless to say, but neither one of them got out. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, so that, that was their first time actually seeing me. In person. In person. So of course, grand prize was Alan Adonis of that night. After that, at Paris Ball, that was when it was the, okay, when is this rival gonna happen? Mm -hmm. You know, because now that you saw who this person is, what are you gonna do? Right. You know, do you want it or you don't want it? Right, right. So it took almost like the next year, it was the following year when um, at the Elks Lodge, which was the biggest ballroom at that time, where, um, any and everybody showed up. That particular ball, I was not prepared to walk because I had already won the year before. And I'm upstairs, you know, with my house members and all of a sudden the face category is going on and the music stopped and you hear, where is she? I want her now. So everybody looking around like, oh my God, like it is about to happen. Michael Princess was talking about me and I'm upstairs on the balcony. How did you feel in that moment? At that moment, I was, I was happy. You know, I was happy that the, the time finally arrived because up to that point, I had already battled with everyone else mm. that was walking at that time or who was somebody and I had already won over them all. Like who? Ira Ebony, Brian Omni, well, the whole house of Omni. Um, Fu uh, Fuquan, um, there was uh, some couple of new, new children um, that was walking at that time that were in the house of La Beja. Um, in addition to that, Michael Ebony, you know, some of the known faces, you know, um, that were walking at that time, David Extravaganza at that time, uh, Harold Chanel at that time, you know, those were the, the Butch Queens that were winners, previous winners. Okay. And um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, there were maybe like, three or four people, which queens that I had not walked against, which I was waiting for the moment for that to happen. And, and Michael calls you out, so now he's ready. And she right. called, yes, Michael called me out to let me know that he was ready. And I was there and I was also ready. And um, so as once I heard that, the whole ballroom shifted to the balcony because they all knew that I was up there. and. At that moment, I was kind of put on the spot and I said, okay, so now this is time. So what I did, which had never been done before at the Elks Lodge, I made my way from the balcony over the balcony, got up from my chair over the balcony. Okay, so everybody downstairs is looking up and it was just one of those moments like, oh my God, like that had never been done before. Mm -hmm. So then I made my way down the staircase, serving the rails, of course. Mm -hmm. That was something else that had never been done. You know, because like I said, face, Butch Queen face is more about the attitude and your presentation. You know, doing something that has never been done or seen before. Those are the lasting moments that you find. And um, at that time I was hungry. You know, I had something to prove. And what I had to prove was, I don't care who you are, what you look like, 
what complexion you are. I am here and I don't see anyone. So what happened in the battle? Who won? Alan Adonis won. <laughs> <laughs> but the battle seemed like it was what appeared to me to be probably half an hour. Um, I mean, but I was told, yeah, but I was told that it lasted almost 40 minutes or 45 minutes or something like that. It was the longest battle in ballroom history. And I think it was the anticipation because everybody had waited for this moment. And here is the legendary Michael Princess who was the it person going up against this new person who is now the it person. So it was almost, who's gonna prevail? Mm -hmm. You know, um, at that time, there were a lot of people who were walking balls, but there were very few who were reigning. And that was the difference. You know, you walk a ball, you win, you win that ball, and then you don't walk another ball for six months or a year. Right. As opposed to someone who is walking ball after ball oh, after ball, and they're winning. Because now the target is on your back. Right, right. Okay. So everybody's gunning for you. And you have to be that person to say, if you want it, I'm here. And that's what happened. So after um, Grand Prize Alan Adonis, of course, the, the whole ballroom just stormed the floor. And um, that was my first time actually seeing Michael Princess on the floor. And after that ball was over, him and I became friends, you know, um, and it was something that no one in Barbara really wanted to happen. Mm. You know, they wanted us to continue this rivalry for the next year or two. And I wasn't trying to hear that, you know, because the one thing that people don't know about me is that I'm a very humble person and not just that I'm a lovable person too. However, on the ballroom floor, I become Alan Adaris, who was a fierce queen. Yeah, <laughs> she was. <laughs> so have you ever walked teen face with anybody? Like any like other moments of yours that we don't know about? Well, I've never walked teen face. Um, at that time, teen face wasn't really a popular category. Mm -hmm. um, but if I can recall, it was like a butch queen and a femme queen. It wasn't two butch queens. Gotcha. Yeah. So I've never walked teen face. Pretty boy face and teen face are two categories that I've never walked. The one thing that I would want people to know that's watching this about my legacy is when you look in the mirror, God has blessed you with beauty. You need to see that beauty every single day you look in the mirror, regardless what anyone say, regardless whether you're light skin, dark skin, brown skin, African, blue, black skin, it doesn't matter. There's beauty in us all. And in addition to that, know that you are a good person. Know that you are beautiful on the inside because once you're beautiful on the inside, it will definitely shine on the outside. When I'm judging face, I look for uniqueness. I also look for natural, a natural face. I come from an era where everybody didn't have the same eyebrows. Everybody didn't have the same size nose. Um, everybody wasn't wearing veneers, right? So when I see a natural person, I'm really rooting for that natural person because they have something that is unique within themselves. In addition to that, they also, if they're smart, they can use that to their advantage because there are certain things that people do, or at least in my era anyway, when we walked face, the white cloths, the water, the wax, those are things that people that's painted can't do. So you have to outshine your opponent any way you can, you know, and use what you have that they don't have against them. Always 
be on the offense, never the defense.